Okay, so that's the side of the ball, the defense, and we just talked about where we feel pretty good because New England's offense is uh, not not has really been, has been inconsistent. Let's just say yeah, that. that's that's a good nice way to put it, good professional way to put it. Um, and this, and I, and this is the other thing. Yeah. Like, to, sorry to cut you off. I was talking to Tan about this yesterday. They've been inconsistent, but we've played inconsistent offenses before that have become and it's consistent. Been the get right game. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm a little bit leery of bringing all that up, but on paper. It, yes. it feels like, right, that we should be in a pretty good position here. But who knows? Yes. On paper, it feels like Sam Howell should be terrified because he is a young quarterback <laughs> and Bill Belichick eats young quarterbacks for lunch. There is no one in the history of the National Football League that is better at confusing even veteran quarterbacks. Like, go yes. talk to Peyton Manning about what it's like to face a great Bill Belichick defense. And this is not a great Bill Belichick defense, but it's not a bad one. And schematically, he has a way of finding what it is that you do poorly and making you do it. And more importantly, I think he probably is the best ever at taking what you do well away from you he will double guys hardcore he will just sell out to stop the run he will do whatever it is that he needs to do to put you and your offense and your quarterback in a bad position and for young quarterbacks specifically he often knows the weakness is identifying blitzes and coverages and so he junks it up and it works so if i am eric bien getting sam howell ready for this game i am uh i'm sweating a little bit 100 percent. couldn't have said it better myself and it's not Okay, well, and that's the podcast. Thanks for I, listening. I mean, that's I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Like the most compelling storyline in this game, in my opinion, is Sam Howell versus Bill Belichick. One hundred percent, full stop. Because, like you said, he does stuff that's a little unconventional. They have so much defensive volume in; they can literally become and do anything they need to do. They can play drop eight with a spy versus John Allen. They can play a six man front with a middle with one middle linebacker versus Miami to stop the outside zone. They can do they're they're so flexible. And then in coverage structure, you have all these guys with like number forty eight on certain downs, who's their middle linebacker, is all of a sudden a defensive end in certain looks. So how do you account for that from a protection standpoint? They bring all out. They play zero. They play zero true man. They play zero match. They play um cover three with two lurk players it's just they do a lot of stuff that is very confusing and confounding to defenses to to offenses excuse me so one of the issues sam howells has struggled with is identifying coverages and identifying fronts and when you look at what they do they can they they have so much flexibility in terms of personnel and in terms of coverage structures that it's going to be very very challenging i think to keep him identified. Now, Fred Smoot brought this up the other day, so I got to cite my source. But he said traditionally, Andy Reid defenses do a pretty good offenses do a pretty good job against Bill Belichick defenses. But I think, to me, skeptical Sally over here that it's probably because they have better quarterbacks. At the you know they have um, Patrick Mahomes or whoever it is. So I, I look at this and I'm like, if I'm if I'm EB, you literally have to kind of prep for everything. But I'm prepping for zero blitz. I'm, pres- pre- I'm prepping for a lot of unusual kind of all-out pressure looks. And I'm, pre- and I'm prepping for kind of unusual coverage structures in the back end and hoping we can give Sam tells to help identify what they're going to be. Because this is maybe the most interesting game, in my opinion, for Sam. Because he does yeah. well against the Eagles. They play simple coverage structures. They play man, they play cover three. He did well against that. Look at the Giants. It's a little bit more complicated, a little bit faster, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more risk reward, and he struggles. This could easily, easily turn into that game for him. And there's even a layer of complexity in terms of obviously, um, Wink Martindale does a ton of stuff that's really nuanced from a pressure standpoint, but the coverages are, are, are a little simpler. Now you get complicated blitz structures in conjunction with complicated coverage structures, and it's like, I don't feel great about that matchup, honestly. Yeah, no, I feel terrible about it. I straight up do not feel good about it. Um, it feels very Giantsy. It feels very Billsy. Um, oh and- yeah, I forgot about the Bills. Like fat, like when he plays fast defenses, it fast, confident defenses that disguise stuff well. It and it not, that's this is not a criticism of him. This is very understandable. He's a yeah, young this quarterback. Yeah, this is this is life of a young quarterback, and it just hasn't gone well. And this defense. While they might not have the elite playmakers that they've had in the past, they just do so much stuff. Like I was watching a third down cut up the other day, 
and it's like, oh, we've got three defensive linemen. Oh, actually, no, we're going to treat this linebacker like a defensive end because he's got his hand on the ground, but he's technically a linebacker. So they have four linebackers on the field, but one's a defensive lineman. Actually, they've got three safeties on the field and one corner. Like they just they have so much flexibility, not only in terms of scheme, but in terms of personnel. It just gets really hard to identify stuff. And the Tyler Larson's going to have a huge, huge role in this game of just – like you're putting him in there because he's got a lot of experience. Like he better be studying his face off this week because he's going to have to know who are the rushers in certain down and distances. What kind of pressures do they like? How do we get this called? And I'm pretty sure Bill will bring game plan pressures, like I would if I was him. And we and if yeah. I had the flexibility in terms of personnel and intelligence to get that done, so um, it's going to be a really and it, this is not an overbearing defensive group from a talent standpoint they're overbearing some of their some of their best guys are hurt i mean matthew judon is hurt christian gonzalez who obviously is a name that everyone is familiar with because uh the commanders passed on him for forbes like he's hurt he's on ir so um you know they've got a couple of their other guys top guys that are hurt but they still have jabril peppers who's super flexible they've still got kyle duggar who does everything very flexible they've got all these guys they just traded for jc jackson again we'll see how much he's out there like a guy who's he's been playing a lot good but he's not have a good well. career in uh San Diego or in uh LA but um he gets traded back and like he was awesome when he was in New England the first time around so how quickly can he readapt to to what they were doing so there there is definitely still talent um even if it's not high end but as you said it's the schematics that that are worrying uh, I think one of the things like to me that becomes super important then obviously is what does the enemy do how does the yeah. enemy handle this because even running the football becomes difficult if you have trouble I, I mean not even Running the football becomes very difficult if you're not good at identifying fronts. You have got to be able to get runs targeted for them to be effective. And so that becomes a huge challenge for both Howell and Larson. That is the biggest impact a quarterback has on a run play, so long that he doesn't fumble, um, is correctly identifying, like, all right, who's the Mike linebacker? How are we targeting this? Anybody else that we want to adjust for? Do we want to bring a guy in motion to add a, a blocker to the, you know, whatever surface? Blah, 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 blah. So that stuff becomes hard. Then if you pass, like, you have to read the whole field, that becomes very difficult. Can you do some of the, the, the half roll and, and full bootleg stuff, cut the field in half and try to make things a little si more simple for Sam. But that also comes with its own set of challenges of you've now eliminated half the field and Belichick is no dummy. He'll be ready for those kinds of things. So there's, there's a lot of potential answers, um, but against a confusing and very disciplined defense, these become less tenable and that's why they're so good is because there's not like a simple thing where it's like okay well if they do that then we know what to do yeah i'm with you and they're pretty good at stopping the run i think they're second in the nfl in terms of allowing the least explosive runs like their percentage is crazy so they, they're they're like you said they're disciplined they, they have some talented pieces like Keon White's a guy, rookie out of Georgia Tech, got some dynamic, some dynamism as a pass rusher. Christian Barrymore, the guy they drafted in the second round a couple years ago from Alabama, dynamic pass rusher. Uh, Wise is a guy that I think is often overlooked, but is a kind of pass rush specialist. So they do have pieces and they do are disciplined. They have talented guys in the back end. And it, it's just this, the, the thing that defines this group to me is the, you've said it a couple of times, and I think it's really apt, the flexibility. They can, linebackers can play safety, safety can play linebacker. They can do all sorts of stuff. They've got guys in the defensive line that can play defensive end, they can play defensive tackle. They can stand up in certain situations and drop. So there's just a lot they can do. And it's, I, 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 they make mistakes sometimes because they have so much defensive volume in, but it's just, when you're watching it, it's just a lot going on. And I think if you can find ways to, simplify what you're looking at i don't know if that's getting an empty that's usually a good way to simplify defensive coverage structure that might be one solution um i you know saying we're going to run the ball doesn't seem like a super tenable thing because that's not what eb wants to do and um the way that this defense plays they, they kind of take that away from you so it'll be really interesting to see what happens a really really compelling element of the game you mentioned what eb does you mentioned what belichick does sam how he processes everything tyler how he targets stuff uh it's going to be an awesome chess match and i think the main thing is like can you just limit the mistakes from sam here um can you not have a bills game where he's throwing a ton of picks can you not have a giants game where he's taking a ton of sacks um, and it's going to be challenging. It's going to be really challenging to do that because it's about what Sam sees and making that picture super clear. So um, in terms of things that I'm excited for in this game, that's one of them. Like as a football fan, I want to see what EB comes up with. I want to see what Sam does. But I'm also very leery 
because I know that it's going to be very challenging for him to handle some of that stuff. No doubt. Uh, we'll talk about this a lot more on Sunday. Take Command pregame show starts at 10 a.m. We'll see you here on YouTube if you're watching it. Uh, you can, of course, listen on the free Odyssey app or on your radio, 106.7 The Fan, the Team 980. Uh, if you are enjoyed what, what we did here, uh, we do this three times a week. So make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. For Logan Paulson, I am Craig Hoffman, and we will see you Sunday. You can come hang out with us, too, in person at Tap Sports Bar MGM at National Harbor. See them. Thanks for watching this clip of Take Command. First, why don't you why don't you like it? It lets other people know that it was good, and then they should watch it too. And Logan, we have a new exclusive home for full episodes. We do 1067 the fans YouTube page. Go check it out and please subscribe. Yeah, do do what Logan said. Do it's it. Very, very smart. <laughs>